Welcome. Uh, a number of you have asked me how to start using Twitter, and so we're putting together this video just to help you out and give you some basic tips for starting with Twitter. Now the first step is going to the Twitter website, which you can see we've done here. Uh, you can Google or just go to Twitter.com, and then you want to sign up for an account if you don't have one yet. Otherwise, you'll log in. So we're going to click Sign Up, and we're going to type in our name. Now, I know a lot of people like anonymity, but realistically, if you're doing this to be a professional Twitter account, then you might as well use your real name. So uh, I will use my real name. And you're going to use an email or a phone number. And then we're going to set up a password. And for us, we're going to use the very secure password of uh, password. And I'm going to deselect that. Uh, and we have to choose a username. Now this has suggested some usernames. You can use uh, whatever you want. Just be aware that that your username uh, can be tricky to change um, and that whenever someone wants to reference you on Twitter, they have to type that username in. So typing in your full name might not be the smartest username since that's a lot of characters and Twitter limits characters. So I'm just gonna use the suggested username of HLW5I and it can ask what I'm interested in. Now what Twitter is trying to do is it's going to try and recommend people to follow and things to follow. Um, so let's just search for something else. Let's just say that I'm interested in emergency medicine. So I'm actually going to select that and uh, continue. And it's going to ask if uh, I want to see who I know is already on Twitter. This is handy if you ever want to see uh, which of your friends already has Twitter accounts. In this case, though, uh, I'm going to skip, but I highly recommend considering checking this out to see if you already know some people on Twitter. And it's suggesting some things based on your location. So the big thing with Twitter is a social network. So it only works if you're networked with other people. And so, uh, so you definitely want to start following some people. Why don't I, I'm going to deselect all of these. So I've unselected uh, select all. And let's say I do want to follow the Broncos and I do want to follow maybe the Denver Post, maybe the Denver Police Department. It's actually impressive how many uh, professional agencies are on Twitter. And, uh, and let's just start with those. And I'm going to follow three and continue. So this is the page that you will see, the landing page, when you go to Twitter. Now, the very first thing you want to do is you want to uh, change this, because right now you don't have a photo and you don't have a bio, um, and you can also see that you haven't tweeted at all and that I'm still following those three people. Those are the three people I followed from the beginning. Well, first of all, let's, let's add a photo. So I was hoping to show you how to upload a headshot of Abraham Lincoln. However, I think Twitter is preventing me from using a headshot of Abraham Lincoln, so we're just going to use a painting. But for you, I would strongly recommend using a headshot of your nice, happy face. People trust people, they trust faces, they don't trust paintings. So with this screen here, uh, this is where you're going to put your bio. And so... Um, you can type a very long thing if you want, but realistically, a good example is to look at other people's bios to see what they have written. So, so I could start with that. Uh, also in your bio, you might want to add some hashtags. Uh, if you are into uh, free open access emergency medicine, you can type that in to let people know that you're into that. Um, some people put a disclaimer, so tweets, not medical advice. It's something that describes you that gets people uh, to find you. You can add your birthday, but we'll just skip that. Uh, you can add a location as to where you are, and that's a good idea just to let people know where you're coming from. And great, so now your profile is set. So you can see how other people will see your Twitter page. So the last page we're looking at is your timeline. That's what you see when you log into Twitter. This is what other people see when they go to your uh, Twitter account. Um, and so they've got your photo and you've got your name. Twitter says now it's time to tweet. But bef uh, so I can say hello Twitter, my first tweet, and let's do that. So let's suggest that I click tweet, and now if I go back to my timeline, there's my tweet out there in the world. Uh, and so just looking at this, uh, just looking at this tweet, this says that that's my my real name. And then over here behind the at symbol is my username. So the username is how you're going to reference yourself and reference others. Um, and then that was posted five seconds ago. 
uh, and it says, hello, Twitter. So we've already started talking about Twitter lingo. Uh, the at symbol is put before username, so you can see this is at HLW5I. This is at Ancestry, of course, uh, um, which is a promotional tweet from Ancestry.com. Uh, I have already started to follow the Broncos, so I'm seeing their tweets at Broncos. So let's find somebody new. So why don't we start following another smart toxicologist? So uh, I'm going to follow at to so I'm going to so I'm going to go up here to the search bar. Now, if you want to find anything on Twitter, you can use this search bar. So if I type at, that lets them know that I'm looking for a user, uh, and then I follow that with Talks Now, and I get the Talks Now account. Let's say I wanted to find tweets about. Um, Let's say I wanted to find tweets about resuscitation. I can type resuscitation, uh, and I'll just select that. It's also even giving me uh, people who have the word resus in their names, and so you can search people that way. But let's just find tweets on resuscitation. And this gives me a listing of people that I'm not following, but that have posted tweets on resuscitation. While doing this, I might find someone that I do want to follow. So if I scroll back up here, I can see that the American Heart Association CPR and First Aid has uh, a Twitter feed. And if you hover, I'm just hovering over that Twitter feed, you can see that it'll give you extra information. It'll show you a little snapshot of their bio, how many tweets they've tweeted uh, since their account started. In this case, 2,729 tweets. They are following 627 people, as opposed to me, who is only following three people. And they have gained 3,917 uh, uh, followers. And what you might have noticed, actually, is while we've been reading this, uh, there are now 20 new results. So what Twitter is saying is, in the time between I started searching for resuscitation and uh, now, 20 new tweets have come out on that. Uh, when you're doing a search, you're going to get this broken down by top tweets. So these are the tweets that are generating the most interest. You might just want to see the latest tweets. So I can click here, and these are just the latest tweets. Uh, and then you, if you want to find people that uh, are uh, tweeting about resuscitation or have that in their bio, you can find that here. So look, here's another example. So Scott Weingart, uh, who tweets under at emcrit, is a very popular guy. So I'm going to start following Scott. So when I click that follow button, it lets me know that I'm following him. And so now I've gone from following three people to following four people. Let's say I just wanted to look at everything Scott Weingart was tweeting. I can click here. And this is all of the things that he's been tweeting. Now, as you can see, he's put out uh, far more tweets, 3,500 tweets. He's only following 118 people, but he has 30,000 followers. So let's find some additional people to follow. And what you will find is that sometimes you're going to follow, uh, uh, you're going to find people to follow based on who they follow. Let's go back to the uh, resuscitation people. So I can follow this EMS 12 lead, which is a nice uh, ECG one. Uh, and, uh, and let's say I wanted to follow the residency. So I'm going to type in at, because I'm looking for a person. And I'm going to type in Denver e -med, e med. It's actually right there. And I'm going to pick that one. And this is the uh, Denver uh, Emergency Medicine Residency page. So I should start following them. So on this page, I'm finding that little follow button. I'm going to click that. And it's going to tell me uh, some other people that I might want to follow. These look like other EM residencies. Scrolling down through the Denver EM page, I see that there's uh, another resident. So I can follow Taylor. Uh, here's our ultrasound, Colorado EM, EMED Sono. Uh, so really, without doing much, you can start following a lot of people. So I'm just going to click that follow button again. So let's go back. So we've been we've been clicking around and doing a lot of things. Uh, if you ever want to get back to your home page, get back to uh, your uh, your timeline, just click home. And so once again, I'm back here. I can tell I'm on my home page because my name and bio are up here. Um, it says that I have now tweeted one tweet, which I have. That's that welcome tweet. And now I'm following eight people. And this line, this list is a summary of 
everyone that I follow, the things that they have tweeted, and the things that they have retweeted. Additionally, Twitter likes to make money, so this also lists uh, sponsored sponsored tweets that, that Twitter wants to put in front of me. So for example, American Express. I haven't followed American Express. They don't know about me, but Twitter's trying to make some money by, by putting that in front of me. So uh, I've already written one tweet. Now, if you ever want to know what you tweeted, just go back. I'm going to click on tweets one, and that's going to open a page that says, oh, this is my tweet. Hello, Twitter. Hashtag my first tweet. So what is a hashtag? We've already talked about a username. Now, a username is that at followed by uh, their, their username. But a hashtag is something that identifies the topic of the tweet. Um, now, you can put hashtag in front of other things. So hello happens to be a word in this tweet. But if I put um, that hash symbol in front of it, that would mean that it's a special label, that this is a tweet that maybe focuses on hello. So why use a hashtag when I can just search uh, in general? And that's, that's, a, that's a great question. So let's say that I wanted to find tweets about Human Rights Day. I could certainly go up to the Twitter bar up here on the right and type in Human Rights Day. But what that's going to bring me is that's going to bring me um, a bunch of tweets that have those three words. So what you can see here is that people have generated their own hashtag, hashtag Human Rights Day, and that is just allowing a uh, focus on a particular event. Similarly, if you go to a conference and you want to find that conference, they often generally have a hashtag also. Uh, so if you're going to SAEM, uh, uh, let's say SAM 16. You can see that there uh, is a conference hashtag uh, there, and these are the top tweets from SAM 16. This is actually really handy if you want to find out what's currently going on at a conference that you're not attending, or even similarly if you want to find out what happened at past conferences. So I can search for SAM 15, and that will even take me back another year. Also handy if you're about to attend a conference and you want to see what was going on before. So let's talk about uh, interacting with, with tweets. So let's take a look. Um, so the Mayo Clinic has posted this tweet on tips for ultrasound-guided joint aspiration. Um, they've used the hashtag ultrasound to say that this is specifically about ultrasound. They've also used the hashtag SAM15 to link it to the conference. And FOMED, which you will see a lot. That stands for Free Open Access Medical Education, which is a, a common thing in the Twitter emergency medicine sphere. And I can see that this was tweeted back on the 19th of September 2015. Now, why did they use this at symbol? We'll tell you later. But um, down here, let's say I like that and I wanted to retweet that to my followers. So um, Mayo Clinic has 2,800 followers. But let's say that my Aunt Sally would benefit from this or someone I know would benefit from this and they follow me, but they don't follow the Mayo Clinic. Well, I can, I can show this to my followers by just clicking that little retweet button. And what this is saying is, do you just want to retweet it, sending it out as it is, or do you want to add a little comment on it? Um, it's, it's your preference uh, what you do, but I'm just going to retweet this. And it reminds me that if I want to add a comment, I can only have 140 characters total. So brevity is important here. So I'm going to retweet that, and now it lets me know that that's highlighted, that that has now been retweeted four times. One of those was me, because it's like that. And let's say I don't, uh, not only do I want to retweet it, but I want to like it. Uh, likes aren't as powerful. They don't show up in people's feeds, but they can be helpful. So I'll like that. Let's say I want to interact with them and say that I agree or disagree with this. So I can click this button. This is the reply button. And what that will do is it starts off the tweet at Mayo Clinic EM, so that Mayo Clinic EM will get notified about this, and it will notify uh, Buskloper. Now, where did this come from? This comes from, because this tweet already mentions this other person, so it's going to try to ding every person. It's going to try to alert every person that's been mentioned in there. And I might say, great advice, or I might say, terrible advice, whatever you want. And it's also notice, no, letting me know that I have used 37 characters, and so I still have 103 characters left in this tweet. Now, one important point. If you reply to a tweet and your reply begins with an at symbol, then many of your followers will not see it. Only people that follow you and follow them. 
in the past, people got around this by starting their reply with a dot, so dot at. However, Twitter is now having people just leave it, start with an at, and then retweet your reply. Separately, if you have a new tweet that is not a reply and that starts with an at symbol, the new update is that all of your followers will be able to see that. But please know that, that this tweet is not private. So I'm just going to click Tweet, and that has been sent, and they will have gotten notified. So uh, uh, that's how you set up a Twitter account, and that's how you start tweeting. I would highly recommend installing the Twitter app on your iPhone or Android device, just because that's also a great way to interact. And it's great at conferences to be able to, um, to talk to people around you. Uh, if you're reading an article and you agree or disagree with the author, feel free to find the author on Twitter and respond that way. It's, it's a great way um, to, uh, to form a new relationship. I hope that was helpful. Thank you.